The most expensive construction of mankind does not materially exist on this planet, yet it has revolutionized your life. It's an unfinished tower that's been under construction for over a thousand years. Millions of hands and minds have labored on it, at a vast cost that cannot easily be imagined. It's built, or grows, at the confluence of societies. Societies that are willing to allow people to specialize, in some cases merely to think for the lust of knowledge, and societies which preserve the discoveries of the dead. It's the mere existence of this tower that means that it's possible for a child of someone who comes from a culture that can just about use fire, can ascend to the level where they can build tools to examine planets around distant stars. It's the ivory tower forged from the summation of the knowledge of mankind, and it's our single most valuable asset. For if it were lost, it would take us generations to rebuild it. We've all climbed the ivory tower to an extent. It influences the way that we view ourselves, our civilization, indeed our very place in the cosmos. It enables ample clean water, life-saving operations, worldwide travel, and even the ability to hold the music of thousands in the palm of your hand in themselves miracles beyond many an Iron Age god. But relatively few perceive what it is that they're climbing, or indeed what the tower is made from. The bricks of the tower are the thoughts of the minds of thinkers long dead, the shoulders of giants preserved by our enlightenment values. But what makes them strong is the scrutiny of those concepts by others. The free exchange of ideas is the quality control that ensures the structural integrity and expandability of the tower. And it's the growth of this tower that has allowed our enlightened world to proceed from the Wright brothers to landing on the moon in less than a hundred years. Indeed, the growth of this tower may yet turn out to be the key component in determining the survivability of our species. But what gives the tower strength is that every brick within it is fully scrutinized for flaws, from all angles, to the best of the ability of the mental craftsmen of that era. There is no dogma. No secret, there is no weakness that cannot be exposed, corrected, or expunged. For where a society accepts dogma, that there are concepts beyond question, whether it's about burning witches or drawing profits. Another Middle Eastern capital, another Western embassy on fire. That society is locked in that state in perpetuity. It can never advance, it can never grow beyond that dogma. For these boys, this is the only world they know. For many of them, it may be the only world they will ever know. They're not learning about math and science here. They're not learning about the world. They're learning only about one thing, God, Islam. A child is like a tree. It will give fruit. When children come to see me, I train them the right way. This is the core reason why I regard the import of dogma with utter contempt. It is the very icon of Dark Age stasis. Hell, we have over 2,000 years of the histories of societies, and if there's one thing that it's taught us, it's that societies that don't defend and preserve their acquired knowledge, societies that are content with the stasis of dogma, languish in the doldrums of the Dark Ages. For it is only the ivory tower that separates societies like this from this. For these reasons, I fiercely resist the import of dogma. For dogma is corrosive to the very matrix of the ivory tower, and the bane of those who do not want their society to regress. Previously, threats of force have applied a significant social pressure to a relatively small number, and the resulting intimidation has resulted in the de facto import of dogma. I'd like to ask him and anyone else who agrees with him is watching, is that the relationship they want to have with the free press? Because if we have to use this stupid word offensive, those of us who believe in the Enlightenment and the Constitution and the First Amendment are very much offended by this mad babyish conduct. But we don't go out and kidnap the nearest Muslim we can find and take him hostage till someone apologizes. We don't, we don't violate diplomatic immunity. We don't, we don't, which is one of the most precious things in the international uh, community, much more precious than the right of Muslims not to have their feelings hurt. The whole thing is a scandal, and we're all running scared from it. This trend needs to be reversed. Now, we have the advantage in that we have the summed knowledge of mankind, while in this case, those who wish to import this dogma merely have this dogmatic concept that the Quran is the best and most authoritative book written ever on any subject. 
We now have the internet, and we are legion. We can cause thousands to tens of thousands of images of Muhammad to be created, and thereby relieve the social pressure on the few that have thus far borne the brunt of this entire pressure. By the incremental work of many hands, we diminish the import of dogma into the enlightened world. Last year, we succeeded beyond all expectations, for not only did we succeed in repelling this import of dogma, we had the nuclear Islamic nation of Pakistan on the defensive, worried about the import of this free speech demonstration into their society. For while they are trying to prevent the import of enlightenment values into their country, they are not applying a social pressure towards the export of dogma to the enlightened world. But prevention is better than cure, and the price of freedom is eternal and at times proactive vigilance. This year we continue the protest, for those forced into hiding by death threats from these people, to ensure that never again will the free press utter the words that they have been intimidated into self-censorship, into the de facto observation of religious dogma through threats of violence. So please... If you agree with this message, take a few minutes to draw a picture of Muhammad and upload it to Flickr, and then post it to this Flickr playlist. Thereupon, it will appear on the website dmd2011tf.net, where the slideshow will be playing safely beyond the hands of any dogmatic censorship. Or better still, take that slideshow code and insert it into your blog. Post it on your Facebook. Tweet it. Get it out there, such that never again will the free press be intimidated into silence through threat of religious violence.